I recently ran across a different version of the creation story that we heard from the book of Genesis today. It says, after God created the heavens and the earth, then God made man. God made the Italians for their beauty, the French for their fine food, the Africans for their athleticism, the Swedes for intelligence, the Germans for order, and on and on it went through the different cultures until God looked at what he had created and said, this is all very good, but no one is having any fun. I guess I'll make me an Irishman. <laughs> In our first reading today from the book of Genesis, we heard about the creation of the world and God's original dream for us, for humanity. God did not intend for the man to be alone, and so God set out to create a suitable partner. The birds of the air, the animals, the cattle were given to him so that he would not be alone. And yet there was still something missing. Then God fashioned a woman out of the same substance of the man, and he cries out, at last, this one is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. At the very core of our being, we can see that God has created us for one another. If we are made for one another, then we must foster a sense of respect for the dignity of all life. If you and I believe we are created in God's image and likeness, then as we heard in the letter to the Hebrews, we must all respect that dignity in one another. By questioning Jesus about the issue of divorce, the Pharisees were trying to bring Jesus into a hotly debated topic of that time. For you see, in the time of Jesus, Women were basically seen as property without having any rights. In some cases, a man could divorce his wife simply because she did something to displease him, maybe burnt the meal or wasn't properly cleaning his clothes. He could get her divorce. And Jesus says, yes, Moses permitted the certificate of, of divorce, but he did so to safeguard the woman, because without the certificate, she could be simply abandoned and left destitute, unable to marry again because she remained the property of her husband. So Jesus wanted the Pharisees to know that Moses did not go far enough. People are not property. People are not things to be used and then disposed of like yesterday's trash. Through the precious blood of Jesus, we must see that all life is precious, that all life deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. Jesus responds to the questions of the Pharisees by going back to the original vision that God had in mind when he created man and woman. Jesus wants us to see that from the very beginning of time that the beauty of marriage is expressed in the complementarity that is found between husband and wife. This mutual partnership of life and love is found in the scriptural image of the rib the rib that was taken from the man and God used to form woman. Scripture scholars tell us that the word for rib in Hebrew is tesela. This word is translated as rib bone, or it can also mean the rib of a boat that forms the sides of the boat. So when God takes the selah from the man to make the woman, 
in a sense, he's dividing Adam into two, two human beings. Reflecting on this, we can say that Adam and Eve were not simply two beings, but halves of one whole, which establishes the equality of man and woman, both of them being created in God's image and likeness. And what's unique about the creation of woman is that she's the only part of creation not made from the dust of the earth, but rather from the rib of Adam, giving special dignity. You know, we have it in our language today. You introduce your spouse, you say, here's my better half, right? It's referring to this passage that God has given to a spouse the right partner, the partner that will help them be their best self, both being created in God's image and likeness. God did not create man and woman to be competitive beings, but two beings that complete each other as one. In this beautiful story of creation, we see that each of us is created in love. That's why God created us. God desired to share his love. And we need one another to be bound together. That need to be together is at the very fiber of our being. Throughout this month of October, the church invites us to reflect on the call to respect life. If we have aging parents, do we take the time to show our love through visits and phone calls? If we know of a neighbor who is sick, do we reach out and offer them a helping hand or a listening ear? If we are in a troubled relationship, do we work to find forgiveness and peace? If we are out with friends, do we avoid gossip or spreading rumors? If we recognize how blessed we are, do we volunteer our time and talent to help others? Or like tomorrow, we have the opportunity to participate in the life chain to protect unborn lives on Stroop Road to form a life chain. These are just a few ways that we can help build a culture of life a culture that cherishes all human life in its dignity as created in God's image and likeness. Building a culture of life is simply part of who we are as Christians, as followers of Christ. The Gospel Acclamation today announced, if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. Only when we are in union with Christ can our love be sincere, and we are able to treat one another with respect and dignity, and the grace needed to respond to God's love. May we pray today that the Lord may grant all of us the grace to see his love revealed in our lives and the grace of responding and respecting and protecting all human life at all times and in all ways.